City, my good friends, is the paradise of the West, the acme of all home builders' dreams. Think of it, friends, a real lakeside home, a beautiful lake for swimming, boating, fishing. At no cost to you, we stand the entire expense. Everything absolutely free. I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, Adams City, sponsored by that eminent philanthropist, Mr. Roland Adams. is a fast-growing center of culture, a city with a future. Buy that future now. Put your money where you can watch it grow. And remember, folks, there is no finer investment on Earth than Earth itself. I thank you. But you see, I have only uh, $25. <laughs> now, that's all right, lady. Don't you apologize, because for 25 bucks down, you're getting to a magnificent, uh, swell bargain. You'll never regret it. And your children will never regret it. And your grandchildren will never regret it. And your great-great-grandchildren will thank you. But I'm not married. Take my word for it, lady. You have the most beautiful lot in the tract. Will there really be a lake, Emmett the Wolf? Why, the whole valley will be underwater in 60 days. Roland Adams' honesty has never been questioned. represent every decent and progressive organization in this town, from the Chamber of Commerce on down. For months you've been robbing the people with your misstatements, and now we're going to put an end to it. <laughs> Why, my friend, Adam City is a legitimate enterprise, a boon to your community. We're running an honest business, and the law must protect us. We know the law has no power to remove you. That's the reason we're here. But you and your gang of hoodlums are leaving this town with a personal escort. And this money is going to be given back to the people from whom it was stolen. I resent that. Go on, get going. You can't do this, Carl. I'll take this up with my senator. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Stay out of this house. Uh-huh. So you can't get... Hey, Mayor Brains? Yeah, a lot of good your legal mind did you in the hands of Martin and his mob. This burns my potato. Oh, I admit I made a mistake. But it could have been worse. Yeah, I suppose I could have broken dates with two beautiful redheads instead of one. Meeting of the board of directors of the Unica Realty Company. And I'm telling you, it's against the regulations for five to sleep in one room. I guarantee no one will sleep here tonight. Oh, that's different. Now, wait a minute. Bring us five ham sandwiches and a large pot of hot coffee. And bring me the same. Yeah. Oh, what do you have? Aspen? <laughs> Mm. Oh, no, my feet burn out. Hey, Junior. Uh, yes, sir. Bring me some grapes. And you, sir? Scram eggs. Scrambled eggs? Yes, sir. Well, Governor, what next? Well, it's a little too early to mention any definite concrete plans. 
But I have an idea formulating in the back of my mind that may turn out stu stupendously proportional. Well, then count me out. That mob back there was stupendous enough for me. What are you squawking about? I made a pretty slick living for you, didn't I? Ever since you joined up with us, and it's for that mob? <laughs> What's a mob, anyway? <laughs> a mob's bad medicine, Adams, unless you're on the controlling end. I know because I've lectured before some of the best mobs in the country. Did any of you fellas ever hear of the word prejudice? Uh, hmm? uh, yeah, that's when one guy hates another guy, ain't it? <laughs> <laughs> Your intelligence fairly overwhelmed me, Wilson. The mob that just wrecked Adams City wasn't even organized. It sprang up overnight, and yet it had plenty of members. You know why? Prejudice. You see, the leader of the mob wasn't only head of the Chamber of Commerce, he was in the real estate business, too. So he went around to all the clubs and told the people that we were a bunch of crooks, racketeers, maybe with changed names. What's that got to do with us making any big dough? You explain it to him, Frank, in one cylinder word. You're used to talking to these dumb clucks. You see, people everywhere are jealous of the other fellow and his money, intolerant of his religion, prejudiced. But now, with the depression and unemployment conditions, this idea is a cinch. We'll capitalize on jealousy, intolerance, and patriotism. We'll form a secret lodge and band our members into a legion of patriotic avengers. The Avenging Angels. That's a great name, Avenging Angels. With plenty of mystery, secret meetings, secret oaths, mysterious robes, and phony riches. <laughs> Boy, the suckers will eat it up. Right, and we'll build up the mayor here as the great public defender and benefactor. <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, what I want to know is, where do we get our dough? What about the financing, Governor? Well, that comes under the heading of the managerial department. Let me worry about that. Well, uh, Boys, I've got it. We're going back to my old hometown where I used to be mayor. A big shop before the field came along and the bootleggers stopped paying me protection money and then I quit. <laughs> uh, my daughter there has an independent income. She's financed my enterprises before. Now she'll put us up until we rake in a few initiation fees and sell a few robes. Boys, if we work this thing right, we ought to have a couple of thousand members anyway. A couple of thousand, Mayor? Well, that many and maybe more if your gift of gab holds out. Don't you worry about my gift of the gab. I'll make the Avenging Angels a national institution or I miss my guess. And from now on, don't call me Sandino. My name's Sands. Don't forget it. American names for American people. Oh, God. <laughs> Sherman is district attorney, eh? Oh, and the best one we've ever had. Oh, how did you ever hear of it? Oh, leave it to me, my boy. I read it in the... Uh, uh Chinese newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> Chinese newspaper. Uh, just think, it seemed like only a few short days ago that I was chasing Wynn and you out of the apple tree. <laughs> well, well, Mayor. Hello, Warren. How's the brilliant old farm crusader? Getting uh, kind of rusty on crusading, but uh, now that you're back... Uh... Well, I uh, could help you out, but uh, my services are rather expensive. So the public found out once, remember? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, your arrival is a scoop. I'll hurry down now for the first edition. Now, that's great. Uh, you might tell your readers... Uh... So hang on to their pocketbooks. <laughs> <laughs> great rivers, these people. Oh, yeah. oh, And the man owed two dollars to you. <laughs> uh, friends, friends, neighbors, your warm greeting has overwhelmed me. Uh, but if you'll excuse me, I would like to have a few words alone with my little uh, canary. <laughs> when uh, my little orchid, I brought a business partner home with me. He's waiting outside, and, uh... And, uh, you'd like me to put him up, is that it, Major Hooper? <laughs> well, you see, we had an emergency conference with some of the leading citizens of the... Well, where we were, and her departure in their interest uh, left us quite unprepared. <laughs> you silly old rascal. <laughs> Ask him to come in. 
Come in, Mr. Sands. What do you know about that? I must have miscounted. Ah, oh, quintuplets. Well, I guess I can find room for all of them, Dad. Any more? No. <laughs> Wynne, uh, this is my associate, the renowned lecturer and reformer, Mr. Frank Sands, uh, my lovely daughter, Wynne. Much more than lovely, Mayor. <clears throat> and uh, these were the gentlemen of the three W's, Messrs. Wolf, Wilson, and Walker, our assistants. Pleased to meet you, Miss Adams. Yes, we've heard a lot about you from the governor here. Uh, uh, not governor, uh, Mayor. <laughs> How do you do? Well, I, I expect you're all very hungry. It's too bad they don't put the diner on the train until it reaches Middleton. Got any grapes? Well, I wouldn't be at all surprised. <laughs> hey, are those real? Why, of course. What are they? Pearls. Pearls? <laughs> that oyster must have had the mump. <laughs> <laughs> Control yourself. Take it easy. Remember your operation. I still can't figure out why you do this sort of work. I wish I could get more of it, Mr. Sands. It's better than being on relief. Oh, but you're far too attractive to be just a servant girl. Perhaps I can help you find something better. Got an alpha seltzer? Wait a minute. See you later. Not if I see you first. What do you think this is? A drugstore? I don't know. I'm a stranger around here. Glass of water will do. Okay. Thanks, babe. The joke's on me. And the drink's on you. You dance beautifully, Miss Adams. Maybe it's because I'm happy. Your radiance makes that self-explanatory. Oh, <laughs> you flatter. It would be utterly impossible for me to flatter you. I can appreciate beauty from a distance, can't I? Yes, but keep your distance. <laughs> Are you going to run for office again, Mayor? No, I believe not. I've returned to uh, Middleton on a greater and more patriotic mission. Mr. Sands here is a noted authority and lecturer on sociological problems. We've been traveling over the country, studying the unemployment situation and the growing restlessness of our nation's youth. After an extensive study of those conditions, Mr. Sands and I have concluded that their basic cause is primarily foreigners. Too long have we permitted aliens and foreigners to prosper by whatever means they choose. I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, the youth of our country is growing indolent and starving. These conditions must cease. There's undoubtedly some truth in what you say, Mayor, but uh, just how do you propose to peaceably remedy the situation? Well, I was just coming to that, Bob, but uh, perhaps my brilliant associate, Mr. Sands, can more ably illustrate our plans. Thank you, Mr. Adams. This is rather impromptu, ladies and gentlemen, but I feel that the cause is worthy of the occasion. The only way that we can save the youth of our nation is to organize them in one single group and through them enforce the precepts of 100% Americanism. Corruption and politics must go. Civic virtue and patriotism must be our goal. We must enforce a reverence for our flag and our constitution. And what is more, 
protect our American womanhood, and guard the sanctity of our home. We must guarantee that the wealth of America must be shared only by real Americans. You mean that? <laughs> to maintain and declare absolute boycott against foreigners is our only salvation. But that's impossible. It's against the very principles and creed of the entire nation. This nation must rise against these foreign vultures, who even though they slyly become citizens, prey upon our industries and corrupt their insanity. It's criminal to advocate such a policy. Why not one out of 20 of us? My friends, they do anything to control their profitable ends. They control our homes, our community relief projects, stores, offices, prices. I ask you, are we going to sit back and allow foreigners to take the very bread from the hungry mouths of Americans? The answer is no. Emphatically no. The man's crazy, Wynn. An organization like that's bound to lead to mob violence. His half-baked theories. Why, Bob, I don't believe you like him. Like him? Oh, sure. Especially his football tactics. Football? The way he held you and that huddle out there on the dance floor looked to me like the beginning of a perfect forward pass. Win, my little flesh, your generosity will win the undying gratitude of thousands. You're an angel. That's not the first time I've been an angel. <laughs> See you later, darling. Yes, I don't. <laughs> you should be proud that your fair city of Middleton has been chosen as the typical American community to carry on this noble movement. Hey, that ought to bring him in, Frank. Well, I don't see why it shouldn't. Did you get the money? Plenty. That burns my potato. Potato. P O T pot. T A T cat. T O. Potato. Say, listen, will you fellas cut out the spelling bee and get down here and help me dress Julius Caesar? Oh, I've done enough already. I'm tired. <laughs> oh, say, listen, Mayor. Listen, honestly, do you think that any sucker is going to fall for all of this shim sham? Well, we'll soon find out. You know, Barnum said there's one born every minute. <laughs> The avenging order of angels originated in the days of Julius Caesar. No, I don't like that. The order of avenging angels originated in the days of Julius Caesar. That's not so good either. <laughs> the order of avenging angels originated in the days of Julius Caesar and is known in many sections of the world as one of the great organizations for the enforcement of right. You should be proud that your fair city of Middleton has been chosen as the typical American community to carry on this noble movement. I hope you brought your $25. This will help pay for your initiation fee, dues, and elaborate robes. For $25, be true Americans. And my friends, it is the duty of every one of you to join this organization. Yes, yes, young man, you can join. You're eligible. You're eligible. Yes. You swear before this altar of purifying fire, the symbol of wrath and vengeance, to consecrate your brain, your body, your entire being to the principles of our holy order? We, we do. do. Then repeat after me. We swear absolute allegiance to our superiors. We swear absolute allegiance to our superiors. No danger or peril shall deter us from executing their orders. No danger or peril shall deter us from executing their orders. You swear to be relentless against our enemies and to show no mercy, but to strike with an avenging arm so long as breath remains, rather than destroy a brother, or reveal a single word of this your sacred oath. Where? Arise, avenging angels! Join now. The high principles of this organization call to every youth. Who got our jobs? The foreigners. Join now and we'll drive them out.
Come in. Oh, hello, Wynn. Where, why, the purple study, Mr. District Attorney? Why, I'm sorry, Bob. What on earth has happened? Before your avenging angels came, Middleton enjoyed peace. Now everything's in a turmoil. Take combined airways. After two wage raises, the workers walk out again, destroy property, cause bloodshed. Well, why don't you do something? How the governor call out the militia? Do something? Like two-thirds of Combine's employees, most of the militia are avenging angels. Frank Sands is behind this whole situation, and I know it. You know nothing of the sort. A man of such high ideals couldn't possibly be mixed up in this trouble. I know my father wouldn't. Maybe the people really feel underpaid. Sands has you hypnotized, too. Like the rest of Middleton, you've fallen for his slick palaver. It's liking a person who is both charming and interesting is being hypnotized and... I thought it was something more than the avenging angels that interested you. Every time I call, you're out with him. That's my privilege. And you're abusing it. If you could only see that you're lending yourself to a racket, darling. And that it's my job to expose it, along with that fellow Sand. Bob Sherman, your election as district attorney has gone to your head. I can take care of myself. And don't let your personal dislikes interfere with your official duties. Goodbye. <laughs> Another thousand hoods sold this week. A profit of almost $3,500. The trouble with you, old man, is that you think in very small numbers. Now, instead of a few dollars from a few people, we're going to make millions of dollars from millions of people. There you are. That burns my potato. <laughs> I knew you when you didn't have a potato. Oh, yeah? <laughs> oh, boy, is that good. The 500, I do it again. You're covered. Same to you. All right, here goes. Round and round and round she goes, and where she stops, nobody knows. Gentlemen, I learned that trick from the Indians. You know, my boys, that for years, the Indians have laughed up their sleeves. Now, look there, he killed the thing again. I didn't tell No, he didn't. Uh, no, did he's honest. Yeah, he's as honest as I am. Yeah, as honest as you are. Quieten down there, you fellas. Quieten down. I don't know, Frank. I don't like this meddling with mobs and strikes. I fear it might end in disaster. Now, well, how can it when you're going to be our next governor? Me? Governor? Yes. Well, I guess I can't refuse. Mr. Baker of the Combined Airways to see you, sir. Oh, yes, my coat, please. There, you see, he comes to see you again. Get that thing out of here, you fellas, will you? Oh, say now, listen, I'm 1,500 bucks in the hole right now. Settle it outside. Oh, what are you crying about? You're in the dough, aren't you? Uh, yeah, 1,500 bucks. That's chicken feed. Chicken feed is must be the way you work. I'll show you. Hey, look, that's the way you work. Come on. All right. All right, show Mr. Baker in. Very well, sir. How do you do, Mr. Sands? How do you do? Meet our next governor, Roland Adams. I've heard of you. I've come to you because I know what influence you have on the people of this community. I feel you are the only one who can peacefully straighten out my workers and end my strike. Mr. Baker, my time is very valuable. I'll pay you well for your time. Uh, what do you want? Well, shall we say 25,000? 25,000? All right. Anything to get my men back to work. I'll give you five now and 20 when the strike is settled. Never mind. Just make out the check to cash and mail it to me. As you wish. Gentlemen, good day. Good day. Oh, Mr. Baker, don't forget. Adams for governor. You see? That's the way to handle those situations. Another month and we'll have this state in the palm of our hands. We'll control practically every public office. And I'll really be governor? Look, each one of those pins represents a branch of the Avenging Angels. Pretty soon, every city, town and hamlet in the entire state will be covered with those pins. And then...
solemnly swear to honorably and loyally uphold the laws of this sovereign state and to conduct the office of governor to the best of my ability. This man Sands, that, that rabble rouser that Adams picked up off a Union Square soapbox and forgot to use the soap. <laughs> He's drunk with power, Harry. The well-meaning members of the Avenging Angels have been aroused into frenzied hysteria by his eloquent gift of gab. The entire state under Roland Adams' governorship is rotten with graft and corruption. I'll agree, Bob, that Sands has to be stopped, but his organization is chartered and legal, so neither you or the police department can do anything about it. All right. Tell your readers that the district attorney openly accuses the Avenging Angel officials of inciting mob violence and strikes for their own personal gain. And not only that, but is prepared to appear before the grand jury asking indictments against them. All right, Bob. Our front page is yours. Cool down and go home and get some rest. All right. I will if you'll go with me. We'll have dinner together. Sorry, but I've got to put some more rat poison in this Sands editorial. Later, I want to drop in on Dave Burtis and his wife. See how they're getting along. Same old Santa Claus, huh? I may need help myself sometime. You never can tell. Say, so you owls must think this is an all-night restaurant. The idea of coddling you with coffee at this hour. Well, kid, what do you think of the lodge by now after nearly two years? It's great. Pass the sugar. It sure is a grand thing to love our country, respect our laws, protect our homes. And say, sis, am I proud? Sands made me traveling organizer for the youth division today. Got to go upstate soon, too. Well, you boys remember Mona. You know, wife and sister. The one with the pug nose and freckles. Oh, say, Mona, you slaved enough for us. Why don't you go to bed? I'll clean up the kitchen. Nay, nay. Mona stay with Master. See Master go to bed, get up, and catch him job at Jenkins Emporium tomorrow. Well, I'm afraid I won't be able to make it, Mona. <clears throat> you see, I got some important lodge duties to do. Well, David, we can't stay... Don't worry, sis. You'll get more out of the lodge than hustling freight in Jenkins' bargain basement. Oh, yes? Well, there's a gas bill and a water bill and a lot of... Uh, that, that's just, they're just trivials, my dear. Why, don't you know that Mr. Sands, the Archangel, has promised me a big job in the lodge soon and is going to pay me a rental for using his place for secret meetings? He says it's safer than his own headquarters. Oh, I don't like it, Dave. This is our home and... Who is it? Who do you suppose? Harry Warren. Oh, oh Harry. Come Hello, in, ye gracious benefactor. How are you, Harry? Fine. Glad to see you. Hello, boys. Well, why all the mirth? Hello, Mr. Warren. How are you, Tommy? Hello, Harry. How are you, Dave? How are you? Have a chair? Thank you. Here, have a cup of coffee. Well, that's fine. And a donut. Okay, if I do. Are you up on your technique? Oh, what do you mean, technique? Donking! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Harry, what are you doing out so late? Oh, a lot of big news broke that laid my putting the paper to bed. Sherman's going to ask for indictments against the leaders of the Avenging Angels. You're not going to headline a story like that, are you? I most certainly am. Mob rule is not right and never will be. Surely, Harry, you're not in favor of our most lucrative public offices and positions being held by foreigners. Dave, I'm surprised at you. Very few of us are more than once or twice removed from foreign ancestry. I fought in the front lines side by side with this so-called foreigner, where there was no difference in race, color, or creed. Each gave his life willingly for the preservation of American principles. I better not get started on that. My wife will have a squad car out looking for me. <laughs> you know how she is. Worries about me if I'm out a little later than usual. Oh, by the way, Tommy, I've arranged for you to start at the plant next week as printer's devil. Well, uh, thanks, Mr. Warren. And Dave, I believe I can get you in the circulation department at the same time. Here, type out this application blank and mail it to me. Mm, I'll do the typing, then I'll be sure you get it. <laughs> <laughs> Harry, how can we ever repay you for all the nice things you've done for us? First, you helped put Tommy through school when times were bad, and. And now you're going to... Oh, forget it. Good night. Good night, Harry. Good night, Dave. Good night. Give my love to Mrs. Warren. I will. 
You see, boys? You both got jobs. Yeah, but honey, if I take the job, I'll lose my relief. Oh, Dave. Bob Sherman, publicly attacking me on the eve of my next gubernatorial campaign. I don't blame him. You've been the weakest governor this state ever had. You haven't done one worthwhile thing since you've been in office. Now, now, don't start clawing me again, my little wildcat. I, I'm working for the people. Oh, that's what you've been saying ever since you were elected. I'd rather see you resign than be impeached. And that's what's going to happen. Oh, if you'd only listen to Frank Sands, you'd be better off. Hello, lovely lady. Hello, Frank. Thanks for the orchids. All the way from South America. A rare flower for a rare girl. I'm not. I shouldn't have such extravagance. Princess, that's only the beginning. Frank, you seem to know all the answers. Why don't you keep Dad from making so many mistakes? I'm worried. People of this state are up in arms over his laxity. I tried to win, but he won't listen to me. He's so headstrong. <coughs> I'll keep on trying, though, eh? Please do. Now, tonight's the opening of the Avenging Angels Free Medical Clinic. You coming with me? After we worked together so hard on the plan, I couldn't miss it until then. Frank. Yes? A fine mess you're getting me into with my daughter while you... Shut up. What are those legislators trying to pull on us? Here are five Senate bills. Sign the top two and veto the rest. But Frank, this tax is too high. It's unfair. I said sign them. I can't do this to the people. Don't hand me a laugh. You don't realize the danger we're getting into. An unfriendly press is the worst enemy we can have. I'm running this state. I'll take care of Warren, that meddling scribbler, in my own way. I'll sign them. We have gathered together here before this mystic tribunal to pronounce judgment upon our enemy, Harry Warren. But now he has desecrated our high standards of morality. My private investigators have brought me conclusive evidence of his philandering and unfaithfulness to his wife. You have spoken. He is an evil force that must be eradicated at once. Eavesdropping, eh? Well, this is horrible. Dave won't take part in this atrocious scheme. Why, Harry, Warren's our best friend. I'm going to the police. Hello, up, Mona. So Warren's a friend of yours, eh? Yes. Will that prevent you from fulfilling our mission? No. My allegiance to the Avenging Angels comes first. Dave! Good. We'll swear your wife to secrecy. And then continue with our plans. Or reveal a single word of this, your sacred oath. Now swear. I swear. <laughs> Arise, the woman Avenger. Better take her with us, men. Go on, you have your instructions. Dave, have you got a typewriter? Yes, it's a little old fashioned, but it'll write. All right, bring it down here. Hi, Dave. You're keeping pretty late hours, ain't you? Yeah, kind of. I just came from seeing about a job. Say, Harry, could you drop me off at the house on your way home? For well, sure today. It's on my desk, and I'm going to take it up to the circulation manager the first thing in the morning. That's swell, Harry. Say, my car is just across the street in the parking lot. Judas got 30 pieces of silver for his double cross, Dave. Hey, Mug, you heard me? Come on, get in!
prepared to be relentless against our enemies. Same old Santa Claus, huh? I can help myself sometimes. And to show no mercy, but to strike with an avenging arm so long as breath remains, rather than destroy a brother. Out of work so long it's made him bitter. Down inside, though, he's 100%. a single word of this, your sacred oath. Judas got 30 pieces of silver for his double cross, Dave. Newsflash. Harry Warren, editor of the Middleton Telegram, was fired early this morning on the Colburn Turnpike. Police, with John Bennett, owner of the paper, hurried to the scene on receipt of an anonymous letter informing them of the crime. More to follow. Extra! Extra paper! Mr. Campbell, there's only one power-crazed individual alive who possesses the motive or the audacity to perpetrate such a heinous crime. Frank Sands? Yes. Warren backed my fight against Sands and was brutally beaten to death. I feel responsible for it. Speaking for the federal government, we are just as much interested in this case as you are, Mr. Sherman. Sands and his avenging serious menace to this nation. But we are powerless. Every mouth is closed with fear and every court is virtually controlled by Sands' influence. Sherman, with my papers and the People's Party behind you, how would you like to run for governor against Adams? Don't you think I have enough to do now? I'm chairman of the People's Party, Bob, and I'm certain that your candidacy would meet with 100% approval. I'm afraid, Mr. Bennett, it would take more than the People's Party to break Sands' machine. It's a ten-to-one shot, but why not try it? As governor, you, why, you can introduce bills and appoint honest men to carry out your orders. This letter was written on a peculiar model of typewriter, Mr. Sherman. I'll have my men search the town first. What's this? It's an application blank for work from David Burtis. Looks like the same typewriter. It does, it does. Have this typewriting analyzed at once, Johnson, if it matches, follow through. I'll do that. Now that may give us what we're looking for. Of all people to pick on, Frank, a newspaper editor. Every paper in the country is demanding an arrest and conviction. You lost your head, now I'm telling you... Never mind the lecture, Adams, I'm running this show. Tomorrow those same papers will headline your candidacy for re-election. Why, you know the People's Party are nominated Sherman, don't you? So what? With the Avenging Angels force behind us, he hasn't got a chance. Anyway, I'll take care of him later on. Frank, are you crazy? Bob Sherman is going to marry Wynn. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, Governor. I'm going to marry him myself. When I told you to stay away from Wynn, I meant it. Now, take it easy. Lieutenant Governor Wilson could fill your shoes without any trouble. Let him do it, then. I won't run for Governor again. I quit right now. I'm through. No one walks out on the Avenging Angels, Adams. You figured out the bylaws. You ought to know that. We're all in this thing up to our necks. We hang together or we hang one at a time. Now take your choice. I must see Mr. Sands. But Mr. Sands is busy, man. But I must see him now. Well... Mr. Sands. Why, Mrs. Burtis. Mr. Sands, they've arrested Dave for the murder of Warren. Well, how do they suspect him? They traced the typewriter used to write that note to the paper. Oh, you've got to save it. You've got to. Now, don't you worry, Mona. I'll do everything in my power. I didn't realize what he was doing. He was blind. Oh, and I love it so much. <laughs> I do understand, Mona. Now, you run downstairs and wait in my car. I'll make arrangements for Dave's release, and uh, then I'll drive you home. I knew you'd take care of it. There, 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 there. Adams, call Sherman on the phone and tell him to free Dave Burtis, or I'll make a fool out of him in court. I don't think he'll do it. Well, call him and find out. And if he won't, I'll spring him at a preliminary hearing. Listen, 
I don't care what Sands might have ordered you to do, Governor Adams. You're wasting your breath talking to me. I'm not going to call off his hearing, and that's that. Burtis is guilty, and he's going to swing. I hope you succeed, but I have my doubts. So have I. Dave Burtis released. Lack of evidence freeze war and murder suspect. Paper, mister. Lack of evidence freeze war and murder suspect. You don't think I'm getting Dave out of this jam because he means anything to me, do you? I'm doing it for you, Mona. I'm crazy about you. Have been ever since that first time at Gwyn Adams' home. Oh! And Dave set you up as an ideal, believed in you, even to the point of double-crossing his best friend. You're the violent creature I've ever known. You're as phony and as crooked as Bob Sherman claims. Why, I'd rather see Dave spend the rest of his life in jail than have anything more to do with you. That's the kind of spirit I like. Now, Mona, you wouldn't shoot that gun at me, would you? I mean, it'd be a... Oh! people waiting outside for your answer on the relief bill. And you're afraid to sign it. Oh, I promise. No matter what Sam's threats. I don't want promises. I want action. Proof. Governor, why the hearts and flowers pose? Thinking over your past sins? That's just what I was doing. And they're far from consoling. Come on, come on, snap out of it. We've got to think of a way to disperse that mob outside. That mob wants the relief bill or my blood. Hank, I'm going out there and agree to their demands. I owe it to them. Are oh, you crazy? I can't help it. Adams, if you go out on that balcony, it'll be your last act as governor of this state. It's my duty.
Hello, Wen. I... I don't know how to begin. Don't begin. I think I know. I was a stubborn, spoiled, fascinated fool, Bob, and... you were right. Oh, Bob. <clears throat> Pardon me. I have a letter here from the President. Stressing the menace that is threatening our entire nation, he feels that the death of Governor Adams is only one of the many indications pointing toward an unscrupulous dictatorship. And he also commends you for your untiring efforts in checking this. The president honors me, Mr. Campbell. No, no more than you deserve. The president says, our only salvation rests with those loyal citizens who love the liberty for which our forefathers died. They will not stand idly by while these sinister forces strangle the nation. He also has ordered me to render you every possible aid. But I am sorry that a menacing mob was responsible for the killing of uh, Governor Adams' assassin. His capture might have led to the real murder. Frank Sands knew that. He wanted that mob to kill Burtis because he was afraid to let him stand trial. Yes, that's true. That man seems to anticipate every movement of the law. Mr. Campbell, the law can't cope with an organization made up of nearly all our city and state officials, directed by a man who knows how to cash in on mob hysteria. Mm, we have known for some time we had to break it up from the inside without the law. With someone who could show that mob how they were being duped. Frank Sands loves power. But he has one weakness. Yes, I'm way ahead of you there. But he's one jump ahead of me. Two of my best women operators have proven that. He's still interested in me. Oh, no, no, Wynn. That's out. The risk is too great. No risk is too great. I have an idea that might help. Listen, I've got it all figured out this way. We'll take Sands, you see. Women of the state, you have patriotically responded to my call. This is a job for women, too, to maintain our high standard of morality and preserve the sanctity of the home. <laughs> to assist our men in their fight to keep the home 100% American. <laughs> to educate American youth to demand the rights of their natural heritage. Please, ladies, please, please. I selected you because each of you is a leader. Now, go out and organize the women of your communities. And out of last night's meeting, we initiated 163 new members. Great. I knew you could do it. Not without your brilliant help, Frank. Ah, but you have what it takes to put it across. With you swinging the women's vote, our power will be unchallenged. Do you realize what that means to us? To us? To you and me. I'll spread Avenging Angel chapters through every other state in the Union. With that power behind me, Washington is only a short step. And where do I come in? to the First Lady of the Land. Mr. Franklin is here, sir, and the other officers of the Lodge are on their way. Show Mr. Franklin and Hobbs, and knock before you enter. Very well, sir. Glad to see you, Tommy. Miss Adams. You know Tommy Franklin, leader of our youth division? I've heard a lot about your splendid leadership, Tommy. That's mutual, Miss Adams. I just dropped in to tell you, Mr. Sands, that I installed a youth division in Morrow County last night. Great work, my boy. Someday you'll be at the helm of the organization. Avenging angels need men of your caliber, Tommy. Well, thanks, Miss Adams. I'd do anything for our cause. Well, I... I didn't mean to come here and interrupt a private conference. I guess I'd better run along. 
Goodbye. Goodbye. Come again, Tommy. You're always welcome. He's a great kid, Tommy. Hope he doesn't get too ambitious. He did interrupt us. Where were we? We were having a little drink. That's right. You just made me the first lady of the land, swept me up the steps of the White House without even mentioning our wedding. Is that the way to treat a first lady? I would. Come right in, gentlemen. What'll I do? Is there another way out? You're not leaving yet. Wait in the bedroom. They won't stay long. Yeah. Hello, Hello, Frank. Hello, Joe. How are you? Hello, Mr. Bill. How are you? How are you? Come on in, gentlemen. Make yourselves at home. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Governor Wilson must be re-elected. Stay on no expense. Buy out the press and radio stations if necessary. Money plus organization is the secret of all political success. Oh, I'm sorry, Frank. I. I heard the radio. I, I thought they'd gone. <laughs> uh, Miss Adams came here on business, gentlemen. I, uh, she, she spilled some coffee on her dress. <clears throat> well, I must be getting along. Sorry to leave. Yes, uh, I, uh, I have an appointment. I wouldn't have thought that of her. That burns my potato. Uh, goodbye, gentlemen. Goodbye. I must be going. Goodbye, goodbye. goodbye. goodbye gentlemen. Governor, awaiting... The woman in the scarlet robe. How did you know, Bob? How did I know? The whole town knows. Everyone's talking about you and Sands. Already? Oh, that's great. Are you out of your mind, Wynn? You'll never live it down. I won't allow you to... Don't say it, Bob. But this whispering campaign... It's only a start. I can't stop until that whispering becomes a roar. And destroys both the avenging angels and yourself, I suppose. I can't stand by and see your name dragged through the mud. Now, when you're young, you've got your whole life. Bob, I love you, Bob. And if you love me, you'll see this game through. You'll even denounce me publicly when the proper time comes. You promise. Our personal affairs are so insignificant beside the service we can render. I'm sorry. It looks as if I'm the weak one. <laughs> Guess I can't take it. Excuse me. Well, hello, Tommy. Miss Adams, everywhere I go, I hear malicious talk about you and Mr. Sands. I couldn't believe it. So I came here to get your side of the story. Please tell me it's all lies. But it can't be. And I set you both up as ideals of Everything that I thought was fine and clean. Saps! That's what we've been, believing the high-sounding lies that you and Sands dish out. If that's what the avenging angels stand for, the order's all wrong. There needs to be some radical changes made, and I'm going to make them. 
I've called you leaders of the youth division here to let you know just what our organization has been standing for. I personally confronted Whit Adams about the gossip that's being circulated, and it isn't just gossip, it's the truth! <laughs> Sherman accuses Sands of inciting strikes and engineering murders for his own political gains. I believe him. It's all true! We've had the wool pulled over our eyes good and plenty, and instead of building up something we thought was clean and fine, we've been helping Sands in his dirty, crooked schemes! He can't get away with that! He do that to him. What are we going to do about it? All right, that's the way to talk, fellas. We'll show them we're 100% American, and the only American thing to do is to help Sherman stop the strike! <laughs> Get the votes, eh? And last. <laughs> How about your new auto tax bill? That's all right. I'll pay that. He pays all his bills. Oh. 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 Our Tommy Franklin and his youth division, completely off the Avenging Angels. What about the women's vote? Well, now, I'm sorry, but that is something that will have to be discussed at a meeting tomorrow morning of the uh, faculty leaders. As a matter of fact, I might say the party leaders at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning at the home of Miss Adams. Oh, Miss Adams. Oh, yes, here with Governor Wilson. Come on over That's there. That's right. Yes, yeah, right here. All right, now, uh... Hold it, Wilson. Yes. Take your hat away from Miss Adams' face. There's four of you in that picture. <laughs> Stand still, Governor. Okay. Now, Miss Adams, will you give us a statement? So what's all this gossip about you and Mr. Sands? Is it all off between you and Bob Sherman? I can only reiterate what Governor Wilson has told you about the meeting at my house in the morning. I'm uh, sure there will be some startling news. At that time. <coughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, uh, now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I guess that's all. Except before you go, I want to tell you that if I am elected governor, I will make one of the best governors that, uh, 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 that money can buy. <laughs> 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 yeah, thank you. I, I guess the press conference is at an end. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you will go into the other room, then you'll find refreshments in the office of the uh, uh, liquor control board. <laughs> 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 That's an idea. I feel like some grapes, too. <laughs> well, that's funny. You don't look like them. <laughs> uh, well, of course, I don't mean to compare myself to Lincoln or any of them fellas, but I really believe that during my next four years as governor of this state... All uh, right, governor. Scram. <laughs> oh, scram. <laughs> oh, yeah, scram. Yes, I... <laughs> don't pay any attention to all this silly scandal, Wynn. It'll soon blow over. I don't mind. I rather like my name linked with yours. Do you really mean that? You still don't seem to realize how captivated I am. Now that I, I've confessed, I know you're going to neglect me. Only until after the election is over, honey. I'd like to be with you tonight, but I've got to work on some important campaign plans for tomorrow. There you go, making excuses already. No, no, no. Can't you put them off? Take me to dinner. I'll help you later. It's a date. Oh, I bet I can. Go on, go on, drive. Go on, go on. Yeah, I'll watch. 
Never! <laughs> you try, but you don't right. do any better. Go on. You watch on. me. All now watch. All right, all right. Go on. <laughs> missed again. You missed it. You need another one. Need yeah, give me, give me another drink. Right. You try give me it again. <laughs> no, 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 wait a minute. No, wait a minute. No, I got an idea. Wait a minute. Yeah. Wait a minute. You know what? Right away. Wait, I'll get him. You get him? Yeah. Anything you give me, honey, will do me good. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. like this. Saps those poor misguided fools were to believe in you. There you have a perfect example of what your avenging angels really stand for. Boy, what a story. <laughs> be you. When? Marry me. Tomorrow. No. Not tomorrow. Not tomorrow. Not tomorrow. But when I can't stand to see you going through this ordeal alone, nothing is worthwhile without you. 
all the pitiful victims of Frank Sand's insane ambitions are worthwhile, Bob. Your first duty is to them and to the state and to your country. Our being together is impossible now. We've got to believe in you. Pointing their fingers at me. Until the last spark of the avenging angels is dead. dying when our marriage would only add more fuel they must never know that I did it deliberately what would you have Bob you're going to be governor you can't back down now and sometime someplace we can be together again when no one will ever know Enthusiasm touches. Your election should drive home more clearly to the people of the nations that theirs is a priceless heritage of freedom, democracy, and racial and religious tolerance. It's an honor for me to ride with you in your inaugural parade. Thank you, Mr. President. But the one who deserves the greatest honor should be riding here with us today. Yes, I know. The nation owes her a tremendous debt of gratitude which it can never publicly repay. Stop driver. 